Okay, so when um, Tapa asked me to present this to the group about information gathering, I was reminded of this. So many years back, um, and I was just starting out in, as a tech writer, and I was getting frustrated with the kind of half-baked information I was getting from my subject matter experts. Um, I complained about it to my principal tech writer. So wisely looking over his glasses, this is what he said to me, and it has you know stuck with me ever since. Technical writers are like mushrooms, kept in the dark and fair shade. Okay, so on that note, let's get started. So great, and welcome to this talk on one of the key steps in technical writing, the information gathering stage. So thank you for the opportunity to present this talk. Now, the reason why I have this as my talk title is because I quite like comparing myself to a detective in the early stages of the technical writing process. The amount of information technical writers see, absorb, and filter out, just to get to the true picture would make a true detective proud. Plus, there is an inherent thrill in chasing the facts. And in this case, it's information about the product. It could be the software or a product or an application that you're working on. Similar to a detective, sometimes you, you look, you're, you're looking for information where it shouldn't be, or you're trying to find inspiration in the most strangest of places. So a little bit about me. My name is Swapnil and I've been a technical writer for close to 18 years now. I'm currently working as a technical writer with Amazon Web Services in Australia. So outside work, I love spending my time reading books, traveling, trying out new food and organizing documentation events. I, um, I initiated and I run the meetups and the annual conference for the Write the Docs Australia. Um, Early in 2024, I was also part of a team that published the second edition of this book called Technical Writing Process. So check it out if you do get a chance. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started with today's topic. Now, these are a few things I intend to cover today. The topic itself is actually quite vast and I only realized how much goes into the information gathering stage when I started doing a prep for this talk. So hopefully I'll cover enough to give you a good overview. Why are we here today? Why are we even discussing this? What is it about this particular stage of the technical writing process that we are still struggling with? You would have thought we would have this all sorted out by now, you know, but each project is a different challenge and we need to use different areas of our skills. Before we deep dive into this though, let's look at something fundamental, the technical writing process. So what are some of the key phases involved in the technical writing process? Like I mentioned before, um, earlier this year, I had an opportunity to collaborate with some other awesome tech writers to work on the second edition of the technical writing process book. So what we did as part of this book was we refined our understanding of the key phases from what was previously five in the first edition of this book that came out in 2015 to seven in the second edition. And this is just based on you know, how the profession has evolved and what we are seeing currently. All right, so typically in a technical writing process end to end, you will see these phases or some variations or iterations of this. So you've got the plan, design, write, edit, review, translate, and publish. So some of these phases can actually be tailored depending on what you're documenting. And some of them could be very specific, such as you know translation or, or localization, depending on the organization that you're working for, or the product you're working on. So you might see that this process has some variations of these key phases, but overall, these are the different sort of buckets where te technical writing falls into. But hey, look at the first thing on the process screenshot under plan. What does it say? collect information, data, and knowledge. So let's dive deep into this very foundation of technical writing. The information gathering process. Here's how you would approach this. So from my experience, there are two distinct activities in the information gathering process.
the first one is plan where you actually uh, beg your pardon a uh, very plan where you actually create a documentation plan to assist your team and set some expectations about the deliverables and the timelines the second activity is research that's how i break down the information gathering phase into so the second activity is research the part where you actually turn detective you gather all the information that you need to write the technical document So let's jump into these couple of activities. So let's start with the planning activities. What, what do we want to achieve with this? What, what is it about the plan activity that we are trying to achieve? Now you need to figure out what the writing project involves by doing some basic planning. Let's look at the first one. And this is, you know, this is something I um, studied when I was doing a technical writing course in uni all 20 years back. So this still hasn't changed. Like I've been a tech writer for 18 years and I still do this every single time I work on a documentation project. Find out the purpose, the audience and the delivery of your documentation. So with a documentation plan, defining your purpose and audience will actually help you accurately define your document scope, which will also guide you with that information gathering phase. So it actually allows you to shape those activities a little bit better. So in this in this activity, what, what are you trying to do is you're trying to find out what is the purpose of creating the technical documentation? You know, what sort of documentation are you creating? Like, is it guides? Is it reference online help? And are you also, what is the end goal of the documentation? Are you informing? Are you instructing? Or are you persuading your audience? The second part of this is what, what should the user be able to do when they read the documentation? It's fine that you've delivered the documentation, but what happens after? What, what, what should the users be able to actually achieve when they read the documentation? So defining your audience, it, it involves determining who you're writing the technical document for and the knowledge gap that you want to fill. So you really need to understand your audience's technical knowledge, background, and the expectations to do this. The delivery part of it is the third part of it is the delivery where it allows you to understand how the documentation will be delivered to the users, which kind of shapes the way you write or the way you use specific tools. The second question to this is who writes the docs? Um, although you might think that you know being a technical writer, that means you should be the one doing the writing. This might not necessarily be the best approach every single time. If you've documented something similar before, that's fine. You can start with a sorry, first draft. But you know what? Depending on your workload and expectations, maybe think about asking the engineers to write a first draft, even if it's like literally a brain dump of what they know about a product or the process or the, the, the actual process that they're actually trying to um, build. Maybe some of this content already exists on an internal wiki somewhere. If they want more guidance, you know, you could maybe help them out by giving them a template, but even then see if they can write that first initial content. So you might actually be surprised that you're not the one doing that initial documentation, which is actually true in a way, because what I've seen over the years is I I rarely tend to write the first draft these days. A lot of the first draft is written by the developers or the engineers who, who are building the product because that they, they they're the closest to the product. They know the product better than anyone. And the third part of the planning activity is asking the product team for a demo of some kind of about the product that you're documenting. So most engineers, in my opinion, are usually ha happy to demo the product. And as a matter of fact, it's a point of pride for them because they're actually building this. They are involved with you know developing this. So it's like it's they, what it's what they do best. Then they love you know doing the show and tell. They actually you know they'll happily sit you next to them and um, show you what they've been building. So use this technique to get an initial feel of the product or software that you'll be documenting. But remember, you haven't even started the research phase yet. This is just the planning activities of the information gathering phase. Let's look at the second part to this then. The research. Technical writers are like, you know, they're like sponges. We gather and soak information like there is no tomorrow. Don't worry though, this is completely normal behavior for technical writers and something we should all be doing, not only at the start of a project, but at every point along the way. 
technical writing is all about synthesizing a focused piece of information, a technical document from a variety of sources. This creates knowledge in the minds of users and it actually helps them carry out the tasks that they may have previously struggled with it. So it's literally trying to fill in that gap of what they know as opposed to what they should be able to do. So the research or information gathering in this is an intricate piece of craft associated with technical writing. And this is where all your investigative skills really come into the picture. So let's break this down a little bit. So recognizing the DIKW um, of, the, of the content, which is the data, the information, knowledge, and wisdom. It's very common for technical writers, especially freelancers or contractors to start a new project with very limited clear instructions regarding expected deliverables. So your manager might not even be fully aware of what the required deliverable should look like. So they don't know what, you know, what sort of documentation is required. They only know that the documentation will be needed, but it's up to you to actually guide them. So this situation is quite normal. So your first task on a new project should be to activate your inner detective. Um, start by searching for existing information before diving into any writing or planning. So the first thing you would do is recognize the, da the data, the information, knowledge, and then turn it into wisdom. So data is your basic units of information, things like you know words, numbers, images, if they've got any screenshots that respect that represent the aspects of reality. So think about you know things like your uh, technical product information or any sort of you know prototypes some mock mock things that they've done. That's actually raw data. The information is the data that has been processed and organized to support decision making. So things like, you know, remember examples of this could be like project plans or presentations about the whole project or the product, any requirements, any specifications. And the next bit to that is knowledge. So information that has been actually internalized by someone providing a basis of them to act on it. So someone's actually picked up all of this knowledge, building a product or strategizing on it. So that's the knowledge. Uh, and the wisdom is obviously the ability of someone to use that knowledge, information and data to make well-informed and sound decisions. So as a technical writer, your role is really to collect all the data, the information and knowledge and turn it into wisdom for your teams and for your users. As you start gathering information, there'll be a little bit of a shift about the technical writing role um, that would help you out during this phase. Rather than thinking of yourself as a tech writer at this stage, you know, think of yourself as a detective. Um, and the reason I keep using the word detective is because you're trying to gather information for your case by interviewing different people. So you would have seen on television or movies, a, a, tr a good detective, you know, they, they want to get to the, to the, to the, you know, the basis of everything. So they start interviewing different people and that's what your role becomes in the whole information gathering phase. So at this type, um, at this particular stage, what you're trying to do is you're, you're, you, there are several different groups of people to get, get that information from. So things like, you know, think a group like engineering groups, which who are actually responsible for coding or building the product or the product management group, like, uh, you know, the team that oversees the products planning and strategy. There's also partners or support, like the group that helps users implement a product or a software. And then there's the testers or quality assurance folks that, you know, the groups who actually test out the product before we release it to the market. So each of these experts will have a different side of the story to tell. So pay attention to this because this will provide you clues on what needs to be documented to the for the user. When writing about a software or a tool, the best thing is use it yourself and try out different use cases and scenarios. The way you do this, obviously, is try and get early access to a test environment so that you know you can start playing around and getting your hands dirty. This will give you a first-hand experience and deeper understanding of the subject, which kind of helps you to write valuable insights that go beyond the theory. Because remember, when you're writing a document, it's not only about you know how things work. You also have a little bit of a context and a storytelling in terms of why things work in a certain way. So this is where you gather all that information when you start playing around with your tool because you've got a deeper understanding of the product. So it helps you write you know, things just beyond the, the how-tos. And doing obviously doing this, testing it out will expose you to questions and challenges your audience might be facing. Because remember, as a tech writer, you are a customer advocate first. So you actually work on a product in a way an audience might 
or your customer might, might be using it. So you actually come across questions and challenges your audience might face. And that's not something the engineers may have thought about. So when you start trying out stuff yourself, it's where you, you've, you have a different perspective on the way the product is going to get used. All right. So we've discussed the plan and research activities of the information gathering phase. Let me share some techniques that I've used personally to gather information for my documentation projects. Like any good technical writer will you know, provide context. Let's for this particular part of the presentation, for, let us assume that I'm working on a software application that has a user interface and some API endpoints that needs to be documented. So at this stage, I don't know what I'm going to document. Um, but given that it's got a user interface and API, it might be, you know, there might be a user guide involved. There might be an API, you know, API guide involved with endpoints documented, but we don't know yet. So let's not worry about how it's going to look like yet. Um, and this application is for the energy market and will be used by companies to gather information on different energy resources spread across customers. So that's the context. So let's imagine I'm going in with this context into a project. I'm, I'm actually working on this software application now with the user interface and API. So what do I do? How do I go about gathering that information? Now, these are some ways I would typically use um, to get, have, you know, to gather that background information and do my research before I get anywhere near my first draft of writing. So I remember at this stage, I haven't written a single word. All I've done so far is, you know, planned. I've done some research activities. I've gathered information. I've tried playing around with the product myself if I can, but I haven't actually written anything. So these are some things that I would probably typically do. The first thing I would do, obviously, is start at the top. If there was like a project or a product manager, I would ask for regular one-on-one -on -one meetings to discuss any upcoming releases. Um, and the reason for these meetings is we discuss potential release dates and scope of every release of the product and, you know, any business perspective of the product. Some of that might already exist in a project scoping document, but I still think that, you know, by talking about it directly with the product owner, I get a better sense of what to expect from um, upcoming releases. So it allows me to prioritize and schedule my work accordingly. Now, the product owner might not be as technical as the engineers, but they do have a better say and a, you know, a better sort of understanding of the product messaging of how the product is going to be, or the software application is going to be released out to customers, what are the potential use cases, what sort of audience is going to use it, and some concepts related to the product. So the product owner also likes to have the input on the docs because docs at the end of the day are a part of the product experience. So I would go in asking questions like, you know, um, who's the audience for this particular API or what are some of the use cases for the user interface? What are some of the important concepts that I need to know when working with this product? Because end of the day, I'm documenting this for the user. I need to know this well enough so I can document it effectively. Um, it's also a good idea to keep the product or, um, owner in the loop um, with the documentation review because even if they might have little input on the actual writing, they do, they are they are actually aware of all the different stakeholders that you might not know about. So it's easier for them to get in, you know, the subject matter experts, pull them into a room as opposed to you having to do it to answer any questions. The second thing I would do is obviously if there's any existing material around a project or a product, I would start reading up on that to get context of the decisions, what customers are after, how the development team is thinking about it. Now this content could just be something that's internal and it could just be you know basic stuff like your business specifications or functional specifications or even like a technical specification guide if someone's created that. But I still feel this is a great way to start learning about the product. Now the, the, the trick is these documents often exist, but unless you ask for them by name, product teams, uh, might not, never actually mention them to you or they, they might not even send it across to you. So your role as a technical writer slash detective is to keep bringing it up, you know, in every meetings that to remind your teams, like, hey, do you have some sort of a presentation deck that I can look up about the product? Like, have you done any diagrams? Has, has there been any customer meetings that, you know, I uh, notes or something, meeting notes that I could benefit from. So I'm talking about documentations like, you know, pitch decks, product design documents, technical specification, meeting notes that gives you an try, you know, it starts giving you a feel of what the product is or the software application is of who the users are. So that all forms a part of your planning and research. 
And you know what? Ju don't just stop there because once you've got all of this information, your role as a tech writer is to cross verify information obtained from different sources because you know you might actually end up using some of this material in your own documentation. So you have to make sure you cross verified it across multiple sources. Now, this is a really good one. If you're working on a software application, um, daily standups, are, you, you, your developers might have like daily standups and they're designed for the developers to share their progress status, but I actually find them to be a very rich source of information for me as a technical writer. So I look, usually I wouldn't usually contribute to much of these meetings. I would just be sitting there and just listening to people, but that's okay because the value for me is in the listening. If I do have to, something to offer in terms of an alternate way of helping the user, I'm more than happy to point that out. But most of the times I'll just listen in because you know what, listening in on these daily stand-up meetings, I get firsthand information on any changes that might affect the functionality of the software application, or it could be about timelines or you know, something that's they're throwing away in terms of, you know, from the from the software applications which I might have already documented. So it's it, you know, just getting a feel of how products or applications are developed and the jargon used by the developers. Because end of the day, remember, I could be writing, my end audience could be developers like externally. So I need to use the same jargon or terminology for when I start writing documentation. The plus point is it also helps you build trust with developers and the rest of the product team. So I find daily standups are a really good resource to you know start gathering information. And this is this is probably like I said before the number one thing you would do. As a detective, you gather information for your case by interviewing people. And like I have mentioned before, there are several different groups you get different kinds of information from. So with your engineering teams, you know you can set up a time with the engineer and prepare a list of questions so that it, you know you're pretty focused in those sort of meetings. What I've done in the past and it has really helped me is when I go into a room or even if I'm doing like an online call with an engineer, I try and record that interview um, just so that, you know, and I make the developers aware of it. Like if I'm working, sitting down with an engineer or a developer trying to understand a certain feature, I'll say, do you mind if I record this? Because end of the day, I, when I start collecting, you know, information from different engineers about different things, I want to, you know, I'll probably have to replay those conversations in my head. So it's better if I've recorded it some way so that I don't have to keep bothering you with questions. And I, it also helps me clarify, you know, different things at different points of time. Now, you won't be able to take enough notes in real time. So I think a recording is a really good way to be able to you know, catch all the details of the conversation. And as you talk with the engineers or developers, you'll find that a lot of times the, the engineer who's you know building a feature or building a software application, they don't know how that feature will be actually used. So you know, it's actually, they don't have the larger picture about the workflows or the product implementation, like you know, your product owners or other, other groups. So you might like how you could be in you could you might be unfamiliar with actually how to work with the APIs. The engineers might also not know, you know, how the users are going to use the API. So in that case, it also helps you clarify your thoughts in a certain way. The second group you would obviously talk to is also, like I said before, the product management or the product owners. They're an, and I find they're sometimes very easier to speak to because they're not as some um, steeped in the technology or they're not into the finer details of the technology. They might have like technical backgrounds, but they're not really, you know, actively working in the feature themselves. So you might actually find this interview more comfortable. And the good thing is they can be your connection point to all other teams and interested parties and stakeholders. So they're actually good. They can actually become good friends or allies in your quest to find that information. Now, another group I really find interviewing and talking to is the partner engineers. Now, this title might actually differ. So you could have, you could know them as, you know, solution engineers, your support and training staff or developer relations. They could go by different titles in organizations. But this is the group that actively talks to your users, end users or customers to help them implement the software products. And so they've got you know, the, the, this group is one of the most important ones because they have frequent communication and they are the closest to the customer. So as a technical writer, sometimes you're, you know, maybe one or two layers away from the customer. So if you are, you know, if you're talking to your partners, partner engineers or support teams or developer relations, they'll actually give you some really good feedback about how the users are using a product. 
and they're also strong champions of documentation because for them documentation is a tool that you know they can they'll be able to do their jobs better as well like at some point let's say a user reaches out to them about a product um, and they don't understand something they're pro most probably going to you know link it to your documentation they'll send the users a link to your documentation so they're really invested in this so it's a really good you know group to talk to because they're the they are like one layer closer to the, the users than you are. So it actually helps. And the fourth group obviously is the, the testers. Now, now this group or the quality assurance group, they probably don't have a lot of information about the users themselves, but what they do have is a group of test cases maybe that they're testing the feature against. And this is what, you know, this can actively turn into something that you can use as topics in your documentation or task in your documentation. They might have, you know, information about how to test an API. Like they have simple applications, they have the test, you know, workflows and the tools set up. And you can actually work with them to actually do it yourself. Like remember when I said earlier, get your hands dirty. The quality assurance group is a good one because they'll set you up with, you know, similar sort of test environments that you can start um, playing around with the tool, with the API, with the user interface to get a better understanding. And the, the end product of all of this is you actually get to use all of this and start forming clear structures in your head of how the documentation is going to look like. Ah, and here's a bonus tip. Be fearless in asking questions. I didn't have this in the previous slide for a reason. Similar to a true detective who does not shy away from you know digging and persisting and keeping asking questions, even if you have to repeat yourself, it doesn't matter. You have to get to the facts and that's what detectives do. That's what technical writers do. You have to be fearless. Personally, I find this is the most valuable thing to learn as a technical writer, having a voice and being sticky with pursuing facts because end of the day, you're trying to do something good for the customers. And um, while I, it might not seem so, you're actually doing your teams a bit of a service because you're thinking you're the customer zero. So if you're not, you know, if your questions are not being answered, chances are your products are not going to be any use to the customers themselves. And lastly, before we move on, um, beware of some, some of these common pitfalls in the information gathering stage. Beware the curse of knowledge. This is a real thing. It's, it's a cognitive bias that occurs when an individual who is talking to other individuals, they assume that they have the same background knowledge to understand the product. And this is a classic thing with a lot of technical teams. When we are, um, when we as technical writers, when we are trying to seek out information for our documents, a lot of the answers from engineers and product owners might be biased because that's how they think the customer will use the product. They are not their customers. And that's where that, you know, uh, we need to be aware of the curse of knowledge. The second thing to this is what is your role? Are you just a writer? Like I said before, your, your role sort of, you know, morphs or shifts um, based on where you are in the technical writing process. There's, there's another reason I mentioned for reaching out to the four distinct groups. Remember I said the engineering, the product management, the, the partner engineers or um, the support team and the testers. Any group alone might present a very you know, skewed perspective and without much variety, it's actually easy to mistake in that perspective as the only truth. There might be a misalignment in what each group thinks about the product capability. So that software that I'm talking, I was talking about earlier, the software app, everyone's got a different perspective on the software uh, and how it will be used. So your role turns from a technical writer to a bit of a product aligner or detective to help define and shape the product story and messaging. And the third part to this is AI. I mean, we know AI is here, we know AI is real. A lot of product teams might actually ask you as Take the tech writer to ask you know, to use start using AI tools to you know read any existing material and start creating the first drafts. Look, it might be possible to do so, but AI tools can only do so much, and they sometimes miss those you know those human connections between how the product is supposed, what the product is supposed to do, and what it actually does. And this is where good technical writers really shine through because you see the big picture, and you add those subtle nuances because you know end of the day. What is tech writing? It's about storytelling. It's that technical storytelling aspect. So AI tools might be able to help you a little bit, but I don't think they're there yet. Um, things might change over the next few years, but you know you have to be really beware of beware when you start using um, AI tools in your in your tech writing process. I'm not ruling it out. It's definitely there to stay, but just 
there's still those, you know, those technical human storytelling aspects that you really uh, bring to the table. All right, so we've discussed all of the plan and research. We've seen, you know, some of the techniques have used. What happens at that in end of that information gathering phase of the process then? So you've collected all the data, you've collected information and knowledge and put this into a wisdom, into a documentation plan. You've researched your audience and gathered the background knowledge to start creating your documentation. So remember the plan activities. And after that, you've also done your research activities. You've interviewed people, you've gone in and, you know, um, played around with the tool yourself. So you probably at this stage have a large pile of content somewhere. So for example, you might have started like a single document where you've collecting, where you've collected all this information. So literally copied and pasted it from different links and stuff like that. So right now it's time to start organizing this information and creating outlines for your documentation. But that's probably a little bit outside the scope of this talk today. So that brings us to the end of this presentation today. To summarize, we looked at the various phases of the technical writing process with a particular emphasis on information gathering. We saw what's involved in the information gathering phase, the planning and the research, so two distinct activities. And then I shared some of my own techniques for gathering information along with a few other things to be aware of. So hope this has been helpful. Um, so thank you again. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.